For those of you who are autistic, isn't it strange that we're represented, or at least supposed to be represented, by the puzzle piece? Now, when representing a group of people, a symbol is either very abstract, like America's Stars and Stripes and Europe's tricolor theme, or you go very impressive and important, make it something that's really significant to the society, like Japan's rising sun, the communists' hammer and sickles, and for Saudi Arabia, they have a sword and religious text saying, there is no god but god, and Muhammad is the messenger of god. But then you, an autistic person, are given a puzzle piece. It has no religious importance, it has no cultural importance. In fact, it doesn't even relate to autistic people at all. It is rather infantilizing, like, imagine if America was represented by a yo-yo, or Germany by those little puppet things that were popular, I think, a year ago. Now, by merely realizing that we're social creatures, you can safely infer that autistic people didn't choose the puzzle piece or anything like it. But that begs the question, why aren't autistic people allowed to talk about themselves? Like, it's not, a, it's not an explicit rule, but it's clear that people are more willing to listen to someone who isn't autistic than someone who actually is. And also, why do they tend to be so racist? Technically, autistic people aren't a race, but that's the best way to describe it, because their beliefs are often completely detached from reality. Why ABA? Why does ABA even exist? Like, yeah, they say that it teaches autistic people social and communicative skills, but the implications are very dehumanizing because it's essentially just operating conditioning. It's essentially obedience training for dogs, but this time for people. And it, sh it shows, because they'll say, oh, it's backed by science, but they have no qualifications, because most of them are behavioralists. Behavioralism is basically when you look at the direct behaviors of individuals and just look at that, which can do some things, but operant conditioning is far too simple for language or socialization. Have they ever implied or just flat out told you that autistic people were subhuman, lacking empathy, and that you weren't worthy of spreading your genes? And worse, did you feel tempted to believe it? Each of the things I just said happened at least once in my life, which is why I went against autism awareness and in favor of neurodiversity. Because, let's be honest, it's autism awareness that's pushing for this stuff. It's autism awareness supplying all the prejudice against autistic people. And if you feel smug or uh, cocky, do not, because you have internalized autism awareness. And I have as well. Everyone who is autistic has especially internalized autism awareness. You see, most ideologies, especially the more radical ones like communism or fascism, target teenagers or s something like that, something like the teenager demographic. And that is because teenagers are very open to new things. They're constantly trying to reinvent themselves, constantly trying to become who they want to be by experimenting with new things. Teenagers are also more creative, retaining more of that childhood openness, that divergent thinking. Is it ethical? Not necessarily, but pretty much every ideology has to do it in some capacity. But autism awareness goes a step further, and it aims at the youngest demographic possible 
which tends to be toddlers. Ever since you were a toddler, you were indoctrinated by the autism awareness ideology. And of course, you've broken free, most likely. But you still have the internalizations. You still have that psychological, cultural, and ideological effect that autism awareness has. Now, the more aware of this you are, and the more you know how to de-internalize it, the better, but you will always internalize a significant amount as long as there's no autistic society, culture, language, and academia. And for that matter, as long as there is no cross-paradynamic argument against autism awareness. Because this gives autism awareness a monopoly, pretty much. Not everything directly comes from autism awareness, but everything is spoken through autism awareness. So it's, it's internalized so deep that you are at least inheriting an idea from autism awareness. And that's a very big problem because autism awareness wants the opposite thing you want. They want you to go extinct. You want autistic people to thrive. So how do we solve that? And it's certainly not just autism awareness. In fact, the biggest factor affecting at least autistic psychology is actually the neurotypicals. But the autism awareness internalization is the most toxic, even if it's not really the biggest. In fact, autistic people have internalized a lot of things that are alien to autistic nature. And the, the things I'm showing right now aren't really bad or good necessarily, but they do stray from autistic nature. And it's, we're not the only people that are dealing with this, but for us it's a pretty big problem. Because nobody seems to, well, most people at least, don't seem to put autism awareness in perspective. They don't see the civilization that they are destroying. They're basically trying to destroy an entire civilization, if not multiple civilizations, before they're even started. They're basically trying to kill a civilization. In fact, multiple civilizations, maybe even hundreds, before they even begin, before they're even born. But then there's the problem. If autism awareness is permeated through everything related to autistic people, what do we even do? Well, first of all, they don't control our motivations. Yes, they are controlling us. They're controlling me right now in some way that I don't even understand. But that is going to be temporary. First of all, try not to listen to autism awareness or anything that has heavily internalized autism awareness. In fact, if it comes from autism awareness, it's safe to infer that it's wrong, because they're constantly trying to gaslight you into believing what they say, believing all the dehumanizing ideas about autistic people. In fact, I would actually look up autism awareness and try to observe everything they do and say. Like, for example, if they say that ABA is good for autistic people and autistic people are naturally unsocial, believe the opposite, that autistic people are naturally social, and it's ABA and stuff like that that prevents autistic people from being social. But the first problem is that it's very heuristical. It's gonna save you a lot of time to focus on more pressing issues, more, more important questions regarding autistic people, rather than spend so much time debunking the stupid claims. It's not actually that much of a problem, because half of the things that autism awareness, or at least the leadership of autism awareness, says 
is so wrong that every other sentence has a terrible implication, a horribly wrong posit. So even if Asimoyanus does say something correct, we're not really losing anything because those instances are so rare and often basic. But the bigger problem is that we're only de-internalizing autism awareness negatively. We're taking away what autism awareness says, but we're not getting down to the true autistic nature. We're not actually learning about our own mind and what culture that mind would make. Regarding the issues facing autistic people, I was originally going to be a lot more Machiavellian and pragmatic. And not that those should be dropped altogether, but while there are political and economic problems facing autistic people, obviously, I think the core of everything is the culture war. It's about a fight between two perspectives, the autistic perspective and the autism awareness perspective. Now, neurodiversity and autistic pride itself can be divided into multiple generations, with each successive generation having a more complex argument against autism awareness. They aren't necessarily more radically pro-autistic or anti-autism awareness, but they generally are because for each generation, the argument against autism awareness becomes more advanced, complex, and it subverts autism awareness on a more extreme and deep level. Autism awareness has unfortunately already adapted to the first generation and is already trying to manipulate the second generation, which is why I'm probably on the third generation, but what's ideal is to go through each successive generation as fast as possible, so like, go from three to four to five. Essentially, the goal here is to establish true autisticness, purified autisticness, as soon as possible, and create essentially an autistic equivalent to kugukaku, which is Japanese for national studies. Now, this is not to say that we should be exclusive to other cultures and ethnicities if we had our own. But rather, this is to ensure autistic self-determination. Unfortunately, autism awareness does have a head start, like at least 30 years before we did, they started their own system, their own ideas, and they're already going twice as fast as we are. So the idea is to come up with new ideas and experiment as fast as possible. So essentially there are two strategies for this. Now this is similar to any duality regarding time, like traditionalism versus progressivism, and historicism versus uh, futurism. But this is more like its own thing, because it relates to the internalizations that occur on a psychological, ideological, and cultural level. The dark time, as I like to call it, or more formally the deconstructionist strategy, looks at all the frameworks and wants to sort of deconstruct them. The strategy is essentially about going back to the original autistic nature directly by deconstructing and undoing all the internalizations that have occurred. The light time or over-internalizing or over-constructing uh, strategy takes the converse approach, or the reverse approach, I don't know what diction to use here exactly, but anyway, they basically, or people, people that believe in the light time strategy would want to create more frameworks, more things to internalize. Someone who is more dark timed, for example, would reject modernist ideas about gender, that which comes from newer movements, and they're not necessarily interested in older or more traditional ideas about gender, but it's correlated because they would be in favor of more naturalistic 
ideas about gender, that which exists independently of, say, industrial society, or in the extreme cases, agricultural society, because gender is a social construct. Someone who is more light-timed, for example, would instead create new ideas about gender or accept the most new or futurist ideas about gender. For example, they would be more likely to accept Mogai and Xenogenders and create gender roles based on that, because gender is a social construct. For autistic people, the autistic Neanderthal theory is definitely very deconstructionist because it tries to get to the origin of autistic people directly. It tries to get to the actual nature which autistic people and proto-autistic people possess. Examples of more light times anti-autism awareness arguments are stuff like the use of philosophical and IAL languages like Esperanto and Lojban by autistic people, and schizo-autistic theory, stuff like that. The strategy of light time is not to de-internalize anything necessarily. As a matter of fact, instead, so many things are internalized, so many new things, that instead what happens is that the old ideologies and ideas are cancelled out, essentially either ignored or seen as outdated. Of course, it's a lot more likely to be very alien to autistic nature, but in theory at least, autistic nature can re-manifest by virtue of autistic people being in control. And of course, the combining part, or as you can colloquially call the anti-centrist part, is essentially where both strategies are combined, so it would actually be quite alien and hard to predict, but I'm putting it up there to differentiate different types of centrism and combinations of the two extremes. So on the top you have the most anti-status quo, and the, on the bottom you have the most pro-status quo. This duality is relevant to autistic people because we do need to be aware of the strategies in which we deconstruct the ideas associated with autism awareness, or at the very least the strategies in which we create new ideas and ideologies. Which strategy you should use primarily will depend on the situation. Now, I think I'm more leaning towards the deconstructionist uh, direction. And that's because there's much less of a chance that it will be manipulated by autism awareness. In fact, autism awareness began by people accepting new things about the world. Back in the 80s, ABA was a new thing. Behavioralism was relatively new. and uh, the idea of autism itself, the concept of autism as we know it, was very new and very infantile. It was in its infancy. However, I do also incorporate some aspects, or at least some amount of the constructionist strategy, because I think that it allows for positivity rather than negativity. In, in the sense that it adds things, it adds lifestyles, economies, societies, cultural ideas. And this isn't to say that the deconstructionist strategy can't be positive at all. Certainly, there is new things it's going to reveal by taking away autism awareness, but generally, the constructionist strategy is a lot better at positivity. Now, I don't want this used to subvert morality itself. Certainly, if we break the rules, we are obligated to replace them with something better. Rather, I think we should establish what is autistic and what is non-autistic.